welcome back. Welcome, 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 welcome back to my channel. Hi, Hada, you feeling good? I'm feeling good too. My name is Jackie, and if you are new here, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. And if you are not new, thank you so much for joining us again. So today I'm gonna to be doing a video, as you can see by the title, Products I Regret Buying. I think that these videos are helpful, and I also think that some of these videos can be a bit counterproductive for many different reasons. One, I think people take reviews a little too biblical, and you have to be able to know when, you know, when to separate, like what works for me may not necessarily work for you and vice versa. It's okay if you love some of the products I'm gonna talk about today. And um, it's okay if you don't love the products I'm gonna talk about today. The second reason is, I'm gonna just be straight up, I don't buy a lot of my makeup. So I can't do a products I regret buying video if half the stuff I own is given to me. Let's just keep it all the way real, okay? And the reason number three I don't like doing, well, it, it has nothing to do with liking or disliking this, these types of videos, but I, I get rid of a lot. When I don't like something, I don't hold on to it for a long time, I'm not a hoarder. I will give it to a friend or literally like when people come to my house, you know, sometimes you may give them tea, you may give them water. Yeah, when you come to my house, you get makeup, okay? Stuff I don't use anymore. So there's a lot of things that I simply just did not have and could not provide for this video, but I did come up with quite a few things. So without further ado, I'm not just gonna sit here and tell you about what I don't like. I'm gonna give you alternatives to the products that will kind of give you a similar formula. Just I'm gonna give you a comparable product that I would recommend over the other. By the way, some of these products that I'm gonna talk about, just because I say that I don't like them, it doesn't mean you'll never catch me using them again. I think that's another reason why I don't like these videos is people see them and they're like, you said in 2007, you said you weren't gonna use. Yo, like, I change my mind about stuff all the time. As a matter of fact, some of the products in this video, I liked at one point and I don't like anymore and vice versa. So we don't roll with it. I don't know what inspired me to do this, but one day I was walking around Ulta and decided that I was just gonna pick up this product and buy it without swatching. I don't know who the heck I thought I was that day. But I picked up the Stila Stay All Day 10 in 1 HD Bronzing Beauty Balm. Doesn't this look like a, a highlighting, like a body bronzer or something? But it's not. It's like a, a it's like a tinted moisturizer. And in no way when hell freezes over this still would not be my shade. It's too light. And then another time, I thought it would be a good idea to spend like $45 on this one from Kevin Aquan. This is, I don't even know what this is called. This has no name on it. I'm pretty sure it's like another beauty bomb, but this is their foundation. And SB06 will never be my foundation shade. Never, okay? This is the darkest shade that they offer, okay? Used it one time and was just like, okay. Why did I do that? Like. I, go to Nigel's and Namie's and, and try those products and I decided not to. I just refuse to be great. I don't know why. But if you want a kind of similar look, vibe, beauty bomb type of product, you can go with the CoverGirl CC Cream. Both of these have a gel-like formula. So they'll all kind of give you a similar, similar finish, not exactly the same thing, but at least from CoverGirl, you'll know you can find your shade. Just saying, shade but no shade, okay? So I rarely come across a foundation that I don't like because I'm a foundation junkie, but I really, really regretted buying the NARS All Day Luminous Weightless Foundation for several reasons, only because I just don't feel like it was the best for my skin type, but a lot of people recommended it using, using it with no primer or using it specifically with only NARS primers. Apparently they work better. I don't know, I just found it to be okay. And I really did not care for the Dior Skin Star. Like the whole Dior Skin Star line was just one big meh of the century for me. It was just, okay, I wore this maybe once or twice. I find the shade to be a little red. Some people swore by this. I don't know what they were sipping on when they started wearing that foundation because it was just so okay to me. Instead right now, my two favorite foundations to kind of get that similar look one is from the drugstore, because I got y'all, y'all. I got y'all. This one is the Black Opal True Color Pore Perfecting Foundation. I love this foundation for several reasons. One, because it is inexpensive. Two, because it has tons of shades at the drugstore. Three, because it's buildable. So if you want kind of like that no makeup makeup look all the way up to full on glam, you will get that. And if you definitely want that skin like look, which is the foundation that I'm wearing now, as you can see, it doesn't get any more perfect matching than what I'm wearing now. This is the Sasha Cream to Powder. I am not worthy. 
have any of Sasha's foundations. I'm clearly not worthy. They are amazing. The only thing is you have to get them online. So I will give you my shades for reference. I use Coco Beige in more of the winter spring months when I'm a little bit more like normal or lighter. And then right now my summer shade is Perfect Spice. Their foundations run a little bit more cooler. Whereas like a lot of foundation lines out there, they try to make every black person look red. Like I'm not NW45, like stop, okay? So I like these because they have more gold and more yellow. You have to have to have to join Sasha's mailing list because they're always giving like free gifts with purchase. So keep a lookout. And if you don't already know, I got coupon codes on deck because I'll be looking out for y'all. Use code Jackie1 to save 15% off everything from Sasha. Earlier at the beginning of the year, I tried out the Dior Skin Star Concealer. And this is just the most basic like it's literally just like a basic concealer like I don't know what it is that I don't like about this concealer I just know that I don't like it and I haven't used it since I literally used it like once or twice and I was just like okay like I was not impressed like it was just whatever to me the one from LA Girl Pro is like three dollars and I like this way more love this three dollar concealer way more than I like for the price that I paid for the Dior Skin Star Concealer. Okay, another concealer, you guys are gonna think I'm a hot mess because I really do go back and forth with this concealer, but this is the Pro Longwear from MAC, and yo, the first time I did a Products I Regret Buying, this was one of them, I hated it, okay, I hated it because it was just blotchy, it didn't blend well, it was just not cute at all on me, and then I finally found a way to really, really, like use it to its best ability, blended it well, started working with that beauty blender. I think I've come to the conclusion that it's just too mattifying. And for me, my eye shape, like I, you can't tell now because I'm really, really good at concealing it, but I have kind of like that deep set, those under eye creases. It's totally hereditary. Personally, I like concealers that add a little bit more bounce back, that kind of add a little bit more filling and are just more hydrating on the skin, I guess. This is just too drying. I feel like it highlights that, I really do. It's just not radiant enough. I would much rather prefer my NARS Creamy Radiant. I feel like this does exactly what Macro Longwear should do, but it's more, uh, ra it's literally more radiant. So I love that concealer. Last year I went to the Face Awards and I got to try some of these NYX baked blushes. They're kind of like um, illuminating bronzers slash highlighters slash blushes, yeah. Half the ones that I owned, I'm not sure if it's the way that they were formulated, but they were like dry and cr like literally dry. And I was just like, excuse me, excuse me. Like literally some of them I had to grind to get to work. I just personally, I don't think that they're, they're worth the purchase simply for that reason. If you're looking for something that compares at the drugstore, like that baked blush, go with Milani. I love their blushes. I've yet to try a blush from Milani that I don't like. My favorite, like my everyday blush is Berry Amore, which is kind of like a mauve pink. And then I really, really like Coralina, which is like my summer color. It's literally like a, like a orangey coral shade. Now the next product I've really, really wanted to like, okay, I really, really wanted to like this product, but this is the Black Opal Oil blotting powder. Now, I just found this to be okay. Black Opal has redeemed themselves on so many levels with everything else that I've tried from this line, but I don't like the packaging. Every time you open it, it's all over the place. Instead, I'm gonna do another Sasha vlog because you know I'll be standing for Sasha. Okay, this is the Sasha Buttercup Great at Controlling Oil. You can use this under eye. It is the perfect, in my opinion, one of the best universal setting powders on the market right now but it's it's more suited for medium to dark dark deep dark skin tones but you can use this all over the place and then if you want a compact version of that they actually ended up coming out with a compact version which at first i was like why would you do that because i thought that they were discontinuing the loose version but they don't they have both l'oreal has some really good products but the only thing that i don't like from the infallible line is their pro matte powder uh this has no color name on it, I don't know why, but I'm pretty sure it's the darkest one and I don't like it. I don't like it. It's just not really all that great at mattifying. If you're canoodling in the L'Oreal aisle, skip that one and try the True Match Super Blendable. They come in warm shades, they come in cool shades, and they come in neutral shades. I'm wearing this powder today. It's great, great, great at mattifying. I, I feel like this is better at mattifying. If you like more loose powders, try the Black Up. This is the Deluxe Finishing Powder. The shade that I use is dark. It's amazing. You get tons of product and it's inexpensive. Hello. I love me some Black Opal. Black Opal is like killing it right now. But I, I went to like every drugstore in my area. Could not find the L'Oreal Infallible 
Chromat setting spray to save my life. And then when I got it, I was so underwhelmed. I was so underwhelmed. Maybe because I just didn't really, I was new to setting spray, so I wasn't really, like I wasn't, my eye wasn't really trained to see the effects of them. So I can't bring it to myself to get rid of this product. I just know that it's just whatever to me. So I'm gonna keep playing with this one and seeing if I like it. I did wear it today just for demonstrational purposes for the video, so. I don't know. Now on the flip side, this product won't give you the same finish and it won't do the exact same thing because this one is a mattifying spray. However, this one from Pixie is supposed to be like a glow mist and setting sprays in general, like whenever you, if you use powder foundations or if you set your liquid foundations with powders and you want to take away that cakey overly powder look, it just gives the skin a beautiful hydrated glow. And I'm pretty sure there's like little tiny sparkles in there if I remember seeing it. I really wanted to like this product. I hunted several different drugstores to track this down, but the Maybelline Blush Nudes I love the idea of it. Like, I love that they did this for the drugstore. And I don't know. I love nudes and I love taupes and mauves and burgundies. And it's a beautiful palette to look at. But the color payoff is just a little disappointing. I just didn't care for it. I, I found myself swatching this several times. And I'm just like, I just know what good eyeshadows feel like. I'm not even going to waste my time putting this on my eyes. So if you're looking for a nude palette, not the same thing because it's all mattes and these are all flesh tones, but the Sonia Cash Shook palette though, eye on neutral matte. <laughs> Let's just give it up for this palette real quick. All right, that's enough. No, but seriously though, like this palette goes so much harder than some of the designer palettes I have. Like, I would take this with me everywhere. You have literally every skin tone shade imaginable. This is almost like the drugstore equivalent of the Kat Von D Shade and Light, dare I even say. I would say that more compares to, yeah, the Kat Von D Shade and Light, it's like the drugstore equivalent. Now, if you want something that's like the Maybelline Blushing Nudes, I totally didn't realize I had this, but this is the BH Cosmetics palette. This is the 28 Essential Eyes Color Eyeshadow Palette, and it's pretty much the same thing, more um, on the gray smokier shades than the blushes, but they probably cost, they'll probably run you about the same in price. And it's just a basic nude eyeshadow palette. Now, if you're at Sephora and if you're looking for something that's a little bit more on the professional range, I would definitely, definitely, definitely say the Balm Nude Dude Palette is the equivalent, the higher end equivalent of the one from Maybelline. So I love this palette, absolutely love this palette. And they also have the Nude Dude and they have the Nude Dude. I like both of them. But when comparing them to the Maybelline Blush Nudes, I would say this one is more like this one. I'm not all that fond of CoverGirl mascaras. This is just me, but they don't really do much for me. This is the Lash Blast Volume. It was just okay. You guys know this. And if you don't, you about to find out, okay? But Ms. Manga from L'Oreal, hello, is the best drugstore mascara on the market. Now, unfortunately, mascaras are not one size fits all. What I love, you may hate, and vice versa. I've noticed that it's, I feel like mascaras are kind of like your hair type. Like, if I have a 3B curl type, the conditioners I like, you may not like for your 4C hair. And that's just the way that it is, so. Yeah, Covergirl mascaras, eh. L'Oreal and Maybelline mascaras are just the bomb, girl. The Maybelline baby skin, I really tried to like it. I did because I wanted to find a good drugstore pore minimizing primer for you guys to say that I liked it. It was just whatever. I feel like it makes my skin a little bit more oily. I think it's pretty good at giving the skin a good base and filling in the pores, but other than that, it doesn't do much. So sorry, but I've yet to really find a drugstore primer that I really like. If you're looking for something to smooth those pores out, I would suggest the Photo Finish from Smash Smashbox. This is pretty much supposed to be like the drugstore equivalent of this one, but I don't know. Baby skin, the baby skin line in general just does nothing for me at all, like at all. I would say stick to the originals, Smashbox, Photo Finish, and Benefit Professional. These are the OGs of pore fillers. I'm not gonna say this is a product I regret buying. 
Well, it is a product I regret buying, but I low-key wish I got it for free. Sorry, I'm just keeping it all the way real, okay? This is the Tinted Under Eye Brightener from Bobbi Brown. And you guys know I love me some Bobbi Brown. I love everything from Bobbi Brown. I think she has a beautiful full range of products for all complexions. But the Tinted Eye Brightener just doesn't brighten my eyes. It just looks a little too cool under my eyes. And I mean, it gets the job done. It's great for travel, something you could throw in your bag when you don't wear makeup. Maybe you're running to the store running errands and you want just something just to kind of even out the under eye area but it to me it just doesn't brighten i instead would totally prefer the ysl touche claw one of my holy grail i will always buy this product type of things i love it it is definitely an under eye brightener it's got minimal coverage but it just gets the job done it's quick it's easy lightweight and i can throw it in the bag so yeah that's pretty much all i have i wanted to incorporate some hair stuff and some skincare stuff but I guess I just got rid of all of it. I couldn't find nothing. But that's pretty much all I've got for this video. I hope that you guys found this helpful. I want to know in the comments down below, what are the top, give me three products. Give me three products that you regret buying and tell me a little bit about why. You don't have to get too in detail. By the way, Snapchat Brigade, I done started a hashtag. Yo, Snapchat Brigade, Snapchat Brigade. Anytime you let me know you're coming from Snapchat, I always do shout outs on my Snapchat and, um, I don't know, maybe I'll start doing them on my videos too. Who knows? Keep a lookout. But yeah, Snapchat Brigade, we rolling real deep. Whenever you come from my Snapchat, let me know in the comments down below. Snapchat sent me, Snapchat sent me, Snapchat sent me. And then I will shout you out on where, of course, my Snapchat. Okay, um, enough of all that extra. I will see you guys at my next video. Thank you again so much for watching. And if you are not subscribed, how you going? How you gonna get all them good makeup tips? You are gonna be walking around looking crazy, okay? Be sure to hit that thing on your way out and I will see you guys at my next video. Bye.